In this video, we want to talk about handling pinned specimens. So almost always this will involve a microscope. And the first thing you want to do with a microscope is something that's often not uh, taught to us in any of our classes or training, but you just have to learn um, by doing it. And that is um, how to set the microscope up for yourself. So the first thing you should do every time you walk up to a microscope is look at the eyepieces. And usually these eyepieces can um, kind of scroll in and out uh, at least one, if not both eyepieces. And this is so that if you have different uh, focal lengths or you know different vision in your separate eyes, you can get both eyepieces to look at the same thing. The first thing you should do though, every time you walk up to a microscope, and I do this even if it's the microscope I use every day, is zero it out. Um, my eyes are pretty similar, most people's are, um, and usually there's a little line or a dot on the, um, on the column here, and you line that up with the zero on the eyepiece, and that's where you want to start. Maybe you can start um, adjusting a little bit, but in general, I think almost everybody can just leave them at zero. And make sure that those are the same, otherwise you're not going to be able to see your specimen. The next thing you want to do is you really want to be um, kind of squared up against the uh, microscope so that your forearms can rest on the table because these specimens are small and when you move them around they're going to move. Um, and from here you want to get the eyepieces um, such that you can see through them. So everybody's eyes are a little bit different distance um, apart from each other and so usually I recommend pushing them all the way in together and then kind of slowly moving them out. And you'll kind of see two overlapping rings of light um, and eventually they'll kind of cross and you'll be able to see with both eyes uh, perfectly through the microscope. Oftentimes for this, um, you can just use your finger or just something under there just so you can see it. When we're ready to examine a specimen, um, with a unit tray, we'll take this unit tray here and we'll hold it firmly, often with your arm resting on the table. Um, your other hand may be also on the table, but the hand that you're going to draw from with you usually want to put a finger or the side of your palm against the unit tray to brace it against here. And then you go in with your two fingers to actually select your specimen and carefully remove it from uh, your box or from your series of specimens. Now, when I'm viewing a specimen underneath the microscope here on the stage, um, I might point out several things. One, I prefer the black side of these sorting discs to the white because that white reflects the light back in my eyes and I find that annoying and sometimes even painful. This reduces eye strain for me, but it might depend on what type of sample you're looking at. Now, what I do with a pinned insect is, now my focal plane for the microscope is, is a little bit above the top of this pinned beetle because I usually don't leave it on something under here. I'm actually holding it in my hand. And to do this, I'm almost always holding the specimen um, in both hands uh, between my thumb and my forefinger. And the reason that was a little bit higher, so now I can use my hands, which are anchored against the bottom of the table. I can look through both eyes, and now I'm able to rotate this and spin it and put it to the exact uh, angle that I want to see. And this allows me to really see characters from different angles and get the lighting just right. I'm right-handed, so I hold the head of the pin in my right hand. Generally, I find that much more comfortable. It might be different for you, but this way I, I can hold it still in my left hand as it's braced against the table. I can adjust my lighting. I can adjust my, um, my focus, and I can adjust my zoom on my microscope. And one trick then you will want to use your stage sometimes is that super high magnifications. Oftentimes, I actually prefer just a single cork. And so here I could rotate this and so I can see just where I want to see maybe on the eye or on the mandible to see if there's a, a seta coming out of a puncture. I get it just right. And now that it's there, um, right, so I was looking at it here. I see it. I bring the cork in and I try to keep it there. And now I can zoom in or zoom out. Um, as needed. And I can pull this out and move it around. Um, and so this is typically how I use a specimen. Then I can bring the unit tray or the collection back and replace it and pull out the next specimen that I want to look at. Now perhaps I want to look at a pointed specimen. And so here we have a smaller specimen which is pointed above these labels. Now, one thing you'll notice is that it's, especially on these smaller specimens, it can be hard to see underneath. And so oftentimes you'll have to move um, these labels. For me, I usually just use my thumb and simply spin the labels out of the way so I can try to see what I want 
um, to see. Then you can use your finger to kind of rotate them back, or oftentimes what I will do is use the side of the unit tray or the box that you're pinning these in to get them rotated and lined back up fairly neatly with the specimen and back into the unit tray.